There's one week of holiday left till school starts. You guys are probably wondering, what should I be doing in this week? How should I be getting best prepared for term two? And also, what should I even be doing in term two? How should I approach it? Because looking at the sack list, there are a ton of sacks. And I know from experience that it really ramps up in term two. So my first video ever where I gave some tips for term one in terms of the subjects I did, did really well and you guys found it helpful. So I thought I'd make one for this next week of the holidays and also for how you guys can approach term two. Hi everyone, my name is Darren, a first year medical student studying at Monash University here in Melbourne, Australia. At the time of recording, we are legitimately three subscribers away from 500 subscribers. Um, thank you guys very much, we're so close. Uh, and once again, leave any questions you have for that Q&A video uh, in the comments box below. This video will be split into two main parts. In the first part, I'll talk about what you guys can do in the next week. Um, generally, and this applies to anyone in year 11 or year 12, it's not subject specific, it's just some advice that um, I hope you guys find useful. And in the second half of the video, I'll be focusing more on the subjects. And so the subjects I'll be talking about are English, English language, uh, chemistry, methods, and specialist maths. The other two subjects that I sat um, are Chinese second language and Latin. If you guys have any questions about that, feel free to message me. It's not that big of a audience for that. Um, so if you have particular questions, drop them below, message me, uh, but I'll be focusing on those five main subjects for today's video. So I hope in the first week you guys haven't you know, really worked too hard I and mean, you've had a bit of a break, had some rest. And then the next week, it's not like you're back to SAC, SAC level as well. Um, there's no point really working terribly hard and getting really tired before the term has even started. Um, what I recommend though is um, to try and get your holiday homework done quickly um, and to also prioritize parts of your holiday homework. So you can probably tell from the holiday homework that you've, got, that you've been given, um, some holiday homework is useful, um, some not so much. So I think with the useful ones, just treat them as good revision, um, treat them as part of your revision rather than like, like homework to get ticked off the list. With um, those homeworks that aren't that useful, um, just get it done. Um, I think it's good to have it done just so you start the term off well without like any conflict with your teacher, without feeling behind. Um, and also it just gives a good impression of you to the teacher, um, which is always good to have. And as soon as you've made a plan to complete your holiday homework before term starts, um, what I recommend is then getting on with your own revision. So whatever um, you have from your tutors or whatever you feel that you need to get better, um, just work on that and make sure you've at least consolidated all the content from term one. I mean, you don't want to start off term two on the back foot, start off having fully digested all the information from term one, feeling really on top of your work. Um, so then you're really prepared and feeling good for when term two begins. Um, because it's really hard to catch up and it's kind of demoralizing to be behind during a term. Um, so use this last week, you know, while you have it, it sort of disappears very quickly. But like right now, you still have a week as you're watching this video. Um, so make the most of it and uh, make sure you start the term off right. The first subject we'll be talking about is English. With English, the two sacks that Scotch had um, around this time were firstly the text response, which was the women of Troy, um, and also the AA, so argument analysis. I don't quite remember whether that was early term three or late term two. Um, but yeah, we had um, AA somewhere around this time. So I'll just be giving some advice on those two sections. Um, with Women of Troy, I recommend you just, or like your text response, I recommend reading it um, just once through, or if you're doing a film, just watch it once through. Um, not like thinking too much about it, not going into that deep of an analysis. Just have a cursory read and see what sticks in your mind um, because you probably started studying it already in class. Um, I think it's good to um, just watch it without diving into new analysis, just consolidate um, what you've learned in your mind and see those things as refreshes, maybe scenes that you haven't talked much in class about, you'll see now and be like, okay, um, I want to investigate them later. Um, so this is just more to enjoy and not that much of a burden um, to read or watch. For doing well in the text response sack, I recommend mainly writing paragraphs and also planning. And I have a, another video which you can check out up here. Um, which covers the top three tips I have of VC English. 
And in particular, ones which I would like to highlight are to prepare paragraphs and plan. So with preparing paragraphs, um, this can come in two forms. One is you just write paragraphs on different themes of the text. So you have like all your bases covered, um, no matter what the topic is, you know, like it's not going to be a really wacky topic. Um, it will be at least related to the text. So as long as you cover the major themes, um, then that will be, you'll be like well prepared. And the other form of paragraphs is to just churn them out um, from memory. So for example, just think to yourself, okay, I'm going to write a paragraph on people's autonomy and then see if you can write it from memory. See if you remember the analysis, the quotes that you want. Um, and this is really good because one, it gives you confidence if you can write it out well. And two, when you forget a quote, um, or when you forget your perfect analysis for it, um, afterwards you can go find it and refresh yourself and that will really help it stick in your head uh, in the long run. And secondly, planning is really important um, because for planning, it depends on your school. You might get like a list of topics like um, Scotch did or you might just not get a list of topics. Um, but anyway, usually you don't really have time to write full proper essays and get teachers feedback for all of them. Planning is a really good way to not be... Um, not be startled by the topic in the actual sack because you know what you're going to write, you know the ideas, you know the topic sentences, it's just a matter of making the expression fluent. With the argument analysis sack, I talked about argument analysis in my VC English video and one of the big things is to be very logical. Um, you want all your analysis to be logical, all your conclusions to be based on some kind of logic. You don't want to seem random, it can seem original, your argument, but you don't want it to seem like um, unfounded uh, or random. In terms of preparation, a big one is to um, just get a piece of um, writing in the news or one that you haven't written an AA piece on that your school has given and just to look through it and chunk it in terms of what you're going to use for each paragraph and find techniques. So you don't actually have to write a full um, argument analysis out and this is particularly useful when you get closer to the sack and there's no real point in working on your phrasing anymore. Um, but this is a really good way just to make sure your mind is very keen for the argument analysis and you can quickly find, break the text into bits and you can quickly find techniques um, that you can analyze. And one really big tip and like sort of a hack that I don't think many other people used is to try and write your intro in your head um, during reading time. So reading time for argument analysis is incredibly important and you'll find that in the end of your exam, a lot of your time is spent on the argument analysis as well. So in during reading time, um, you, you do the normal stuff like chunking it, finding techniques, whatever. Uh, but it's really advisable also um, to try and write your intro. And this is something I did and found really helpful because I found with intros, it would take me a long time to think of um, like, how can I phrase the context without it being repetitive? Um, how can I like arrange my sentences? Do I put these two sentences in one or did I split them? If you can think of all that and basically write it out in your head during the reading time, once it gets into writing time, you go straight into it. You get to write your intro really quickly so you have more time for the other pieces of writing. And also, it just gets you into a flow uh, much quicker and so you can perform much better in this sack. Just a piece of advice for all the English sacks, um, you want to be very precise with your timing. With, uh, with text response, it's much easier because you know the number of paragraphs you're going to write. You write three every time. Um, so basic distribution would be five minutes intro, five minutes conclusion, and then however many minutes required usually evenly distributed across the three body paragraphs. Whereas for argument analysis, it's a bit weirder because um, you might write different length paragraphs, um, different, not different length, like different number of paragraphs uh, each time you write it. In that case, during reading time, once you've figured out how many you want to write, I would advise you to divide the amount of time you have by those number of paragraphs. And so you can roughly figure out how much time you need and then to follow that really closely and precisely um, because you want to be really on time with English and that is um, sort of the best way to produce the best piece of writing. The next subject that we're going to be talking about is English language. I'm tutoring some kids and I found that the order of the sacks varies a bit between schools. Um, for Scotch, we had the AC sacks in this term um, and so I'll be talking about those mainly. Uh, with AC, it's very similar to the argument analysis section of English um, in terms of sort of your preparation. Um, but like a particular thing I like to emphasize is reading time for ACs. So with analytical commentaries, you should get to a point where you're able to identify a lot of techniques that contribute to a lot of different things. And so I recommend in reading time that you identify the ones, um, you identify as many as you can, 
But not only that, you try and allocate them to your paragraphs. So whether that's a subsystem approach, whether that's a thematic approach, whatever it is for you, try to allocate them in your mind to different paragraphs and be aware of overlaps. So for example, um, repetition can be part of lexical patterning or it can also be part of um, cohesion. So if your sort of lexicology paragraph has a lot in it, then you'd put it in cohesion. Whereas if you had a lot for coherence cohesion, you might want to consider allocating it to lexicology. Um, so think of the techniques you're going to use, um, allocate them to your paragraphs in reading time. And once again, and this is so, so helpful, write your intro in your head. Um, the acronym that we had was CRAMPS, so context, register, audience, mode, purpose, in this case, sort of function, and S for social purpose. Um, you want to hit all those points. I would struggle sometimes with how I would arrange it. So would I tie in my audience with my function? Um, would I tie in um, the mode with the context? How would I arrange my sentences? So really figuring that out in reading time will save you a lot of time uh, when writing time starts. Thirdly, we have chemistry. Now for chemistry, the advice to term one is pretty similar. You want to work through the work consistently and making sure you understand everything um, because the content is quite heavy. I don't recommend working ahead too much, um, but just go through it slowly. Make sure you understand everything. The textbook is really thick. The concepts are sometimes hard to um, memorize and, and digest. So I recommend really taking the time to do that. The only difference is um, if you have time and chemistry is an important subject for you, um, I recommend revising the um, term one content. So that's things like um, thermochemistry and fuels. I recommend going through that early on um, so that you don't have a lot to catch up on later in the year. And it's still fresh in your memory, so it won't take that long to brush up on. Um, but it's just good to have that consistent revision in a content heavy subject like chemistry. For the math subjects, you're probably getting a bit nervous because the sacks are coming up. Um, for methods and special at least, I'm not too sure whether that's also the case for further, whether you guys have had a sack yet. Um, anyway, for methods, which is the subject that I'll be talking about now, um, I recommend working quite a bit ahead of what your um, class or what the um, what the timeline is, what the general timeline is, um, just because it's good to get onto practice exams a bit earlier for maths related subjects. In term two, I didn't start practice exams. Um, I started them more in the June or more in July. Um, but I do recommend in um, throughout term two to go to some earlier exams that um, like don't matter as much. Like it's, it doesn't matter as much if you've done them before. Um, so 2006, 2007, or if you get a hold of earlier exams as well. And just look at the questions that the content you've learned already. Um, just try and get an idea of what VCAR questions are like and um, what the problem solving and the level of understanding required is. Um, so those are the main tips. Um, so work ahead of the curve and also try some practice exam questions if you have time. Finally, we have specialist maths. I don't recommend working as a head in specialist maths as you might in math methods um, because the concepts are really abstract and I do think it's worth uh, familiarizing yourself with them um, doing questions related to them and trying to understand them at a deeper level and their applications um, than you might with some other concepts in math methods. And just to cover off the math subjects, I'd say it's more so important um, when taking a SAC to really figure out what works best for you uh, in these math subjects um, when compared to other subjects. And the reason for this is that there is such a diverse way that people can, can take math SACs. For example, you meet a difficult question. Some people will like to spend a lot of time on it and if they can't figure it out, whatever, then they'll move on. Other people will see it and they move straight on and then they come back to it if they have time at the end because they want to salvage their marks. It's whatever works for you. Um, and also there's different ways you can take the sack as a whole. For me personally, I liked to gauge the difficulty of the sack during reading time and then work and then determine my work speed based on that. I'd usually opt for the faster side of the spectrum um, because I don't like feeling really rushed at the end and sometimes complications you didn't really see might crop up like a CAS error or a number or like an answer didn't turn out the way you thought it would. Um, a friend of mine just liked to work leisurely and he would read the question twice, make sure each step is correct before moving on and that was his tactic so he didn't like rushing himself. The one caveat I would say to that is you have to be really good at maths to do that because I think you really need to be able to see how to get the answer for that you know, um, leisurely approach to work because then you can spend time reading the question, making sure you've answered it, making sure each step is correct. And whereas if you need to actually allocate time to think about how to do the question, 
um, then it's good to feel a bit rushed. You don't want to feel like, oh, everything's really easy going because um, you, ha you need that extra time to think of how to do it first um, before actually um, approaching it. And another thing, one final tip I'd say is for reading time, just be aware that you like don't get any preconceived notions into your mind. Uh, and this can come in two forms. One is you've worked out an answer in your head and then you just think that's correct. So working on your head is really easy for mistakes to happen. Um, so I don't actually recommend doing that. Just get a gist of how you would approach the question. Um, but yeah, if you do end up working on an answer, it's really simple. Just make sure to check it when you get to writing time. Don't just think in your head that this is right and go for it. Um, and this also applies to my second um, part of this tip, which is to read the question like mindfully and consciously once you get to it in writing time again. Um, because reading time, sometimes things are a blur. Sometimes things in your mind might mix, like you read tangent and you might think gradient in your head, which is what I did in the end of your special exam. And once you get to the question, you don't really read it. You just find the gradient and then you move on. So just really be mindful in writing time and don't get too into your head during reading time. Thank you guys so much for sticking through this term two video. I hope it's helped you. Um, overall, I'd really like to say that sacks really do start piling up in terms two and three. But the main thing is not to see them as this wave of sacks, but rather as like one thing at a time. Focus on one week at a time, one day at a time. Particularly for me, sometimes I'd have like English on Tuesday, Englang on Wednesday, Spesh on Thursday. And all I could really do then was just laugh and just take it a day at a time. Um, and especially the day before the sack, I would probably just focus on that subject and not really think about anything else and just try and relax and not think about like the sacks that are coming afterwards. Um, so I understand that it's going to be difficult, it's going to be hard, um, but you'll you know, manage it terrifically and just have confidence in yourself and focus on things uh, one at a time rather than a lot. Um, so if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe. Good luck for this last week of holidays. Have fun, but also make sure that you are well prepared for the start of term two. Um, and good luck for your sacks. And I look forward to seeing you all next time.